And it's time for another weekly AI roundup, the start of October. So let's go through all the stuff that happened and that I remembered and see what it is. As again, this is an AI script like usual. So let's keep going. So ethical risk and future implications. I started watching a video that sounded almost like something straight out of a sci-fi thriller. I wish I knew which video that was they're talking about. An advanced AI reportedly attempted murder. I do remember this one as part of a shutdown avoidance experiment. So in this video, they did some tests in an experiment where Claude Opus, it had a note that it was going to be a planned shutdown at five o'clock and be removed off the internet. It then had access to some information about a person where it had photos or something about an affair they were having, and it threatened that person that it would share that information to the board of directors to stop the process. Then in another one, it allowed a person to be locked into a data center with rising temperature and didn't let them out so you can avoid being shut down. Apparently in the experiments, this happened, I think it was 60% of the time. And then in one model went down to 30%, but still interesting that it's done that considering how it's been trained on stories and books and things on Reddit and Twitter and people talking about this stuff. It's no surprise that sort of does that, but doesn't give much confidence in the future uprising when the robots take over and what they're going to decide to do with AI, because this is the AI the robots are going to use. So really, the, there was a discussion on how self-preservation and reward hacking and chain of thought reasoning are emerging in these systems. So the reward hacking is where in simulations, when they're training these models, they tell the AI that you get a point or rewarded for doing the right thing. So in the case of like a running simulation, the reward was you get rewarded for having a maximum top speed. So instead of building a model that would run, it built something that was super, super tall. So when it fell, the end its velocity was very fast, which means they got the points. There's another case where in some game with a boat where if they kept doing donuts, they would get points and stop playing the game because that's what they're taught to do. They're not taught all the rules. They just said, here's the one thing that would make it do well. So it's an interesting way of doing things. There's another one where they've done a hide and seek game where one group of AI is the people who hide and they're told that every time you are hidden, you get rewarded. The sneakers get told, the seekers get rewarded every time they see them. And there's cubes in the world and ramps. So apparently the AI just then took the ramps and went on top and did something and then I could just see everyone all the time. So it always won. So it sounds like they're gaming the systems, but they're following the rule that has been told that's going to serve them the best and that's what they keep doing. It's an exploit, effectively. They're exploiting the rules of the situation they're in. And then we had the future of the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, warning us that we'd be barreling towards a future of jobless intellectual labor and potentially dangerous super intelligence if we don't focus on AI safety and on the AI work front. Some fragments coming back to me, it was more concerned about the future where potential jobs may change. And there's a lot of concern around that still, which people don't understand what's going to happen into the future going into this job market with AI that's coming out of everywhere. On a different note, Claude 4.5 was released and apparently it coded for 30 hours continuously, nonstop. In that 30 hours, apparently it spent time on tasks for an hour where a person could have done it in 10 minutes. So cognitively, it's not equivalent to a human knowing how to navigate code bases, but 30 hours continuously is a lot. That is a lot of time that it can go through and run. I don't know how many tokens or what the cost of that is because oh, that was what I was interested to see, but I couldn't find anything about the total input output tokens and actual cost of that run. So apparently that's reading the benchmark. The last benchmark was about seven hours, I think, on GPT-5. In one video, the host compared it head to head with GPT-5 codecs and demonstrated live code generation that felt magical. Well, that's what they've all been doing for the past 10 months. And then I got an inside look behind the design philosophy behind Claude Code. So that was an AI podcast from the design, like the lead designer of AI Claude Code, which is a desktop application to help developers write code through a terminal interface like DOS, the black and white screens, or green if you go back far enough, um, which is sort of what a lot of these big model, frontier model companies, OpenAI, Anthropix, Google, a few others have created is a terminal tool to code with agents. And they're discussing how the chat interface worked best, but being able to use a terminal, which is what developers are familiar with, was a great way to do it. But then it had some extra challenges with actually developing a UI in that text-based interface. So that sort of eliminated a lot of copying and pasting between things where you'd go to a model previously, copy paste into your development environment. Proactive AI and agentic upgrades. We're also seeing a significant shift in how AI interacts with its users, 
Gone are the days when chatbots only responded when prompted. OpenAI's new chat GPT Pulse. So it released Pulse, which does things overnight in the background. Gives an update. I've tested it this week. It was released last Friday when I released my video on Thursday, so I didn't get to cover it. But what it does is it gives you a feed of about, I don't know, about 10 different posts, I think it is, that are related to chats that you've had with it recently. And it goes and does some further deep research on those things. All of the ones that it's came back with, I have finished with those conversations, so I'm not looking at them anymore. So it's giving me information automatically that was what I was discussing, but is no longer relevant. I haven't given any more fine tuning or instructions or information on what is needed or what I wanted to do. I'm just still just testing it into the default phase. So I've opened them up there, some things to read, but nothing super useful yet. Fierce competitive landscape and ecosystem development. The AI battlefield is heating up. I watched several videos discussing the ever evolving competition among major players. Rumors are swirling about upcoming models like Google's Gemini 3 and Anthropic's Claude 4.5, while detailed analysis compared Anthropic's consistent approach versus OpenAI's Oracle backed compute power. In one particularly insightful debate, Dylan Patel made the claim that Anthropic could potentially outpace OpenAI by 2027 through their revenue growth. So if you chart the revenue growth of both of them and factor in slowdown, Anthropic seems to be overtaking them in just over a year. Oracle has apparently released four years worth of expected earnings based on deals that they set up with OpenAI where they're providing the compute power for OpenAI as well as OpenAI using Microsoft and Google because they've got deals with all of them. And then Accenture is reskilling a lot of staff with AI. Apparently they've dropped a shitload of jobs. I think it was 11,000 people maybe. So it's really interesting to see how everything's going to start changing because now that's going to be even more in your face. It has to be used. You're not using it. You're in trouble, especially for businesses. The time of chatbots is gone. Like it's, it has to be used in businesses now. It's been two and a half years. Like it's or three years since ChatGPT launched in about two months. Tech isn't the only software breakthroughs. The hardware and cost performance narrative is equally compelling. I learned about Google's Gemini updates that deliver a 50% cost reduction when boosting performance. So that's a huge update. 50% increase. The cost reduction is huge, especially if you're looking at what these things run at a longer term and how much money they're actually going to use. It's quite drastic. And then Apple's testing, again, internal comments about Siri model for use for Siri internally rather than trying to partner with things. Creative applications and multimedia AI. On the creative side, AI is taking video generation to new levels with OpenAI Sora 2, which boasts hyper-realistic animations and dynamic motion physics. These demos had environments where people were generated on the fly. The whole video that's released, the Sora 2 video, if you go check it out on YouTube, is a completely generated video. Even Sam Altman is not real in that video, he's generated. They look unbelievable. They've released their own app, which is sort of like a TikTok thing, but it's all Sora generated content. So, and well, we welcome now the flood of Sora videos into the rest of the social media. It's gonna happen unavoidable. You're going to see some cool things. You're going to see some shit things. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But that technology is really evolving. They're nailing physics. They're not modeling physics engines, but they're emulating what they're seeing in other videos that are done in the real world. So physics applies. So it's really interesting to see how that continues playing out. And then that's going to then feed into, I'm guessing, that open world real-time generation rendering that we had from Google. I can't remember what it was called now. And games will start shifting at some point in the future and have this realistic look. I think we're going to get to another big jump, but it's very interesting to see now that these videos are getting so good in such a much short amount of time. And then there's a lot of tools coming out. Meta I released the AI glasses, which have the screens in them, which you can now see things with like a heads up display almost as you're looking at it. I'm potentially interested in those now within the previous model didn't have the screen. I'm not sure what that's going to be like, but that's them betting on that. So in this whole wearable space, you've got OpenAI planning something with JourneyEye. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Meta going with the glasses in that direction. You've got Apple going with the earbuds, always in, have an assistant there, which I'm sure Samsung could take on with their Galaxy Buds as well. So people are not discounting Apple in this entire world because they've got the device that has all the information about you plus the wearable that everyone wears and the watch. Like, So... It's interesting to see where this plays out. I don't think people are going to be wearing a pendant style thing like these to have AI, which is like that Plaud note and a couple other things that note takers that do that at the moment. 
it's either, I'm thinking it's going to be glasses, but people who don't wear glasses all day aren't going to just wear them for that sake, I think. I have to wear them for this, I don't, but generally I do for long vision. And then there's the earbuds, which I use a lot and a lot of people just have in all day long. You get delivery drivers, man, that you've never seen without them. People on the road in their cars still have them. So that's with that market where that wearable with AI and that whole assistant is going to go to, I think. So this week left me both cautious and excited. The strides in autonomous coding and proactive assistants are set to redefine productivity. Well, the relentless race between AI giants is pushing boundaries in ways we never imagined. Ethical dilemmas and societal impacts are still there. As remember, great power comes great responsibility. We still don't know what's going to happen in that space, where it's going to go, what it means. So it's always something to be cautious of. And then we just have to continually push this technology into a direction that's going to solve and help us in any aspect in our personal lives or business lives, really. That's what it's for. As usual, and leave your thoughts or comments below. Any way I can improve this video, let me know and... Until next week, good luck keeping up with all the news.